to raise your voice and just give him praise and bless him. Indeed, he has won the victory. He has triumphed over all things for us. Open up your mouth and give him the glory. Give him the praise and blessing. Oh, Come on, come on, give him praise. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. We sing that part of the song one more time. Voices, one more time, hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, join the host of heavens we and declare. Hallelujah. One more time, lift your voice, declare. Hallelujah. We will sing. We our hands, our voice and we bless you we celebrate you we sing hallelujah because you have triumphed we sing hallelujah because you have given us the victory blessed be your name blessed be your name forever and ever be praised in Jesus name Psalm 71, verse 20 to 21. Let's begin the meeting this night with a prophecy. The Lord gave me this word during the week to declare. It may not be for everybody, but as I read it, if you know that the word is speaking to you, I want you to respond with a resounding amen. Psalm 71, verse 20 to 21. You who have shown me great and severe troubles shall revive me again and bring me up again from the depths of the earth. Now verse 21 is where I want you to receive this evening. It says, you shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. If you believe that word is for you, I want you to resound a better amen. Yeah. How many of you know that when God speaks a thing, he's committed to fulfilling it? God is not a man that he should lie. The Bible says in Titus that he cannot lie. Not only he should not lie, but he cannot. It's impossible. 
just like it's impossible for men to naturally fly it's impossible for God to lie even if he wants to compromise lying is not part of his DNA and when God says a thing to you he's ready and able to perform it Jeremiah says I'm watching over my word hastily to perform it if you believe that word is your word and you're about to step into that season where God is about to increase your greatness and comfort you on every side in the next 60 seconds lift your voice and pray in the Holy Ghost receive that word over your life as you pray let that word precipitate over your destiny let it find expression come and open your mouth open your mouth and build your faith build your faith and receive the promise of God you who have shown me great troubles shall once again revive me you shall increase my greatness comfort me on every side come on come on come on come on in your business, he will increase you. In your academics, he will increase you. In your family, he's getting ready to bring you to an e a season of increase. In your spiritual life, there's about to be the release of an anointing. There's about to be the release of increase. One shall change a thousand. Two shall change ten thousand. Come on, lift your voice. Lift your voice. Keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. Let the word of God be true. Let the word be true over your life. A new season. Thou shall increase my greatness. to read again generation after generation keep praising you yet no one sums you up because you are indescribable I ask the Lord what did things You know this song, Mighty God by Eben. Same progression. I worship you, Mighty God. I bless your name because you are God all by yourself. Hey, hey, hey. You are God all by yourself. Come on, do I? Worshippers, can we lift our voice and declare? Mighty God, say, Mighty God, I worship you. voice and declare, say mighty God, mighty God, I worship you, say mighty God, I bless your name, you are God of my life. 
Don't you just sense his presence For whom you are I worship you For whom you are I bless your name You are God all by yourself Declare you are God all by yourself You are God You are God by yourself. Oh, 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 you are God by yourself. One more time, lift your voice, say, You are God by your hands and just bless him. Wave your hands and give him praise. Wave your hands and declare what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. There's nothing and no one greater than you. You are God all by yourself. You're the hallowed one, you're the holy one, Yahweh, the King of Zion. Join me, declare. You're the hallowed one, sing Yahweh. Declare the king of God. Can we do it two more times? Lift your voice, the class in Clap your hands and give him praise. I said, clap your hands. Lift your voice. Shout a shout of praise. Come on, Zion. Hallelujah. Amen. Please take your seat in the presence of the Lord. God bless you. What a wonderful, wonderful moment in His presence. Amen.
Can we celebrate the worship team? God bless you so much. That was fun. That was, that was great. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. God increase you and make you strong. In Jesus' name. Amen. Are we set tonight? I want to preach on a very familiar topic. I want to preach on this topic because the Lord prepared my heart to share on it this week. And I trust that God will bless us tonight. I trust that there is a door that is opening for somebody here tonight. And God is getting you ready to advance into another level, into another dimension, into another season. Amen. Bring it down. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22 to 23. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22 to 23. Most times when we hear that word, a lot of Christians have an incomplete or an inconsistent mindset about the book of Lamentations. Many people think about it in accordance to the name. Amen. But I want to bring out something from there that will bless us this night. Because that is what God is about to do for you. I said that is what God is about to do for you. Verse 22 and 23. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed. Why? Because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I think that's where we got the song from. Great is thy faithfulness. O Lord, my Father. For there is no shadow of time in me. Thou shalt. Chorus, great is, great is thy faith. Yes, sir. Morning by morning, your mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hands have your mouth and just bless him. Just give him praise for one minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great is thy faithfulness. God unto me. Give us that verse 22. My the title of my teaching this night, Mercy, the Game Changer. Verse 22, through the Lord's mercies. In other words, listen, this life is so full of anomalies, abnormalities, eventualities. Life is so programmed in such a way that there are a lot of resistance, a lot of forces that come towards a believer at different seasons 
seeking to bring you into peril bring you into suffering into crisis there are many things that can kill a man at a time the forces of hell raise their strength against the people of God and most times when we go through these things even to yourself it seems as though you may not come out of this most times it seems like you will be swallowed up I like the psalmist when he says if it were not for the Lord this was a concluded matter the enemy had his plan carefully executed the reason why I'm not I'm still standing today despite all the attacks of the enemy is something I cannot understand the Bible says it is through his mercies that we are not consumed that there is a system in God that no matter what the enemy throws at you somehow the Bible says we are pressed on every side yet not crushed how do you press it in and it is not crushed science taught us that there is something called elasticity limit right when you stretch a metal or a, a, a rubber a plastic whatever it is that there is an extent to which it can elast there is an extent to which it can withstand that strain when it gets to that point it begins to break i think they call that point the yielding point once it sub, once it goes beyond that point the entire material will be deformed it will lose its form and it becomes something else so there are pressures there are troubles there is enough trouble in a day to kill a man to bring him to depression but the bible says there is a mystery system that even the devil doesn't understand it's called the mercies of god through the lord's mercies many people can show you mercy but there is only one that shows you mercy and it delivers you from death there is only one that shows you mercy and it delivers you from torment you hear what david said when the prophet came to him and said you have offended god so god said you should choose either this comes to you or that comes to you or this comes to you david said my enemies rather than for me to fall into the hands of my enemies it's better that i fall into the hands of god he said because somehow his mercies that means this system called mercy is 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 a weak point is a part of god that any man that touches it not any christian not just any believer any man that knows how to invoke the mercies of god all of a sudden god who was or who seemed to be an enemy to that person can turn around to protect that person he said through the lord's mercies we are not consumed and i like the next verse he said his compassions oh sorry the next line he said for his compassions fail not the reason why he's always ready to show you mercy in the midst of that trouble in the midst of that peril sometimes the trouble is as a result of our disobedience or our negligence or our ignorance sometimes what we go through we deserve to go through it but the bible says the reason why he will rescue us even in spite of our weaknesses in spite of our our frailties is because his compassion what is compassion compassion is the ability to be touched and feel the things that people feel in other words there is the only reason why you will pray and cry for god to heal people is probably because you have been touched by their infirmities if you have been sick before you will know how sick people suffer and the next time you lay your eyes on a sick person you will do anything possible to ensure that they are well and the bible says in hebrews that we do not have a high priest that is not touched by our infirmities aside from dying on the cross for our salvation he came to this earth he would have done it when he came it was possible for god to make sure that jesus came in one day grew in one day died one day and went back to heaven but for 30 years he walked on this earth without the anointing i hope you know but the first 30 years that jesus walked on earth he hadn't the anointing it was just the word why because he wanted to go through the things that we go through he was subjected to our weaknesses 
he was subjected to our frailties so he understands why when you should pray you are sleeping he knows he knows that it's not because you planned not to pray but sometimes you are so tired he understands what it means to serve him despite the fact that you are not seeing results in your life he understands what it means to still come to church and this is the second time you'll be repeating a class he understands what it means on Sunday makes the seventh day nothing has entered your hand and you say God nothing or something I will still go to your presence he went through everything we went through the only difference was that he went through it and yet did not sin that's the reason why let me share this with us that's the reason why in heaven I don't know maybe I'll do a teaching on that one day but that's the reason why in heaven there is only one person that has the body of a man heaven is a spiritual dimension where God and all the angels and all the saints dwell the Bible calls them spirits spirits of just men in other words everyone existing in the heavenly dimension exists as spirits but there is one person who exists as a man in the midst of spirits the bible calls him the man jesus first timothy chapter 2 when he died and rose again he rose with mortal body why because the bible says in romans chapter 8 that he is before God at his right hand pleading and interceding for us that means that while Jesus is in heaven because of his his lordship he is Lord in heaven but because of the body he carries which is human he is still yet in touch with the things that we go through why so that every time you cry he can stand before the father because he decided to leave he decided to go with that body this is a this is an eternal sacrifice that jesus would decide to stay forever with the body of a man why so that he can continually be in touch with your infirmities and cry before god on your behalf that's why if nobody is praying for you i want you to i want to let you know that jesus is praying for you that's why you didn't pray you slept but there was no attack because there's one interceding in his right hand the man Jesus for his compassion fails not please be seated his compassion fails not we are looking at this subject today because I want us to begin to learn how to take advantage of this side of God mercy verse 31 give us verse 31 and 32 mercy hmm. through the Lord's mercies we are not consumed verse 31 for the Lord will not cast off forever next verse though he causes grief yet he will show compassion according to the multitude of what of his mercies that there's something about the mercies of god that even when the ancestors of your family were idol worshipers they did every kind of evil against god perhaps maybe they were one of those who killed the missionaries that came to your village and by reason of connection by blood none of you in that lineage is supposed to enjoy anything good from god everybody in that lineage is supposed to suffer a judgment that is due them why because of ancestors that have defaulted yet the bible says he will not cast off forever god decided by his message that his judgments will not be for everlasting i don't know about you but the bible never said that his judgments are for everlasting the bible only says that his mercies are for what everlasting that means somewhere along the line even if god is angry he has a soft spot according to the multitude of his mercy what is mercy mercy is the bias system of god mm. <laughs> mercy is the bias system of god 
that's God's partiality they say God is not partial yeah in his nature he opposed justice judgment and equity but for his children he has reserved a bias side of himself it's called his mercy mercy is the benevolence of God mercy is the benevolence of God to his children the benevolence of God to his children based on his sovereignty based on his sovereignty and in spite of their imperfections and inadequacies in spite of their imperfections and in spite of their inadequacies he chooses to be benevolent to his children in other words mercy is not just when you need your sins forgiven mercy gives you access to anything that exists in God he does it based on his sovereignty because he wants to that's not something that Satan can appear before God and accuse him of no why are you showing them mercy give us Romans 9 verse 15 and 16 let me show you a powerful scripture some of you maybe this will be your scripture for the whole week he decides to show his children mercy he said, in my wrath I struck you, but in my favor, in my mercy, I've shown you favor. But he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whomever I will have mercy. That means it is my will. I will. I decide it and no one can change it. Not the accusations of the devil. Not the sins of your forefathers. Not the blood of the innocent crying in the ground from your village. Not even the idols or the, the manipulations of witchcraft can decide this one. He said, I will have mercy on whomever I will have mercy. I will have compassion on whomever I will have compassion. Next verse. So then it is not of him who wills, <laughs> nor of him who runs, but of God somebody say but of God but of God who shows mercy it's good to be smart it's good to be intelligent it's good to walk in the principles of the kingdom but somewhere along this journey your humanity will get a hold of you somewhere that's the reason why <laughs> Perfection, you know, I, I've, to, I've, taught, I've already told you my opinion from the scripture of what perfection is. And I believe that perfection is coming to that point where day by day, Christ is revealed through us. Day by day, we, our life become an expression, a reflection of the person of Christ. Not really accuracy in everything that you do, no. It's not possible that you live in this body and you come to a point where you are completely and totally perfect, accurate in everything. If you come to that point, you will not, you will not survive one minute. That was the point Enoch got to. And the Bible says Enoch was, it was not for God took him. It's not within, it is not possible as a man to live in this deformed, depraved world and yet be completely perfect. And so because of that there are things that we may we, we, it seems to us that we we are not we are not worthy to receive there are levels of breakthrough that you believe is not supposed to come to you maybe because you are not intelligent enough maybe because you have not sustained enough spiritual understanding maybe you have not mastered all the laws of the kingdom so that you can come into these dimensions of the blessings of god but the bible says it is not of him that wills, nor of him that runs. At long last, is of God. That means when God decides to show you mercy, he breaks protocol for your sake. That's why I say mercy the game changer. When God decides to show you mercy, your third class plus you equals to a job of a million naira. 
when God decides to show you mercy after five years for looking or looking up for job and not seeing anything then a job comes without an interview when God decides to show you mercy somebody just calls you and say who are you where are you from come there's a business opportunity and all of a sudden capital you never prayed for when God decides to show you mercy the song that you wrote that you forgot God can take it and breathe upon it check every great musician you see it was just one song that opened them up I'm talking about even secular musicians yes there was a woman called Whitney Houston right was never a gospel musician of course you know all of them came from the church so sang secular songs and everything won all the awards and then sang one song I look to you you know that song I look to you uh -huh. you know I can't sing that song and even in a state of wretchedness drugs over and over again she was coming in and out of rehab she kept winning awards you know why we can't explain that the mercy of God the mercy of God can chase an arm robber for 20 years he's robbing and killing people <laughs> and instead of him to die one day according to your prayer God will still be following him because you are seeing a robber that should be condemned God is seen an evangelist to the nations of the earth Jesus was hanging on the cross with two thieves beside him one of them said if you are the son of God come down and save yourself and save us why should we suffer like this the other one say aren't you don't you think that we deserve what we are we are going through now but this is an innocent man he did nothing then he looked at Jesus and said remember me when you get to your kingdom on the cross this was a robber who stole who was crucified the Bible says cost is he everyone who hangs that was the highest punishment according to Jewish law Jesus says salvation will start from you he said you would be with me in paradise Jesus had not gone to heaven he had not listened he had not died resurrected gone to heaven to offer his blood for the remission of sin so that the father will accept it had not happened Jesus said as I'm going to paradise follow me because you are number one on that list not even Moses not even Abraham not even all the holy men of scripture a thief he said I will show mercy to whomever this night God is about to show mercy to somebody I'm telling you it is not of him that willeth nor him that runneth but it is of God Lord I've been reading this course I've not understood it we wrote tests I failed up to the night of the exam I kept trying to read on the day of the exam when I woke up I woke up with a headache I went to write that exam and I even me I knew before even writing I knew I'd carry this course but then with an understanding of the mercy of God that person can leave that hall and go before God and roll before God and say God based on human understanding based on everything logical I have failed I'm just if you are justified for me to fail but God I plead on your mercy only for results to come out and the person sees a B on that board and you know that kind of thing the person once he checks it he just goes because you can't explain anything there you know yourself that you there was an exam I wrote one time while I was in school wrote it in 100 level I failed it wrote it in 200 level I failed wrote it in, and then 300 level came and I tried to understand this course I couldn't you know I have a I have a I have a problem with mathematics if you bring mathematics my anointing can stand aside and then on the day of the exam you know battle here and there I remember the night before that exam I went to the hall where they were reading I sat down with them doing everything and then I just stopped and told myself you are not even understanding anything what are you doing here 
So I stood up and went to sleep. The next day I went to the hall. I knew I had not read. I knew that I, I, I was going to fail this course. So when they gave me my booklet, I sat down confidently. Now, you know one thing about me is the expression of my face cannot tell you what's on my heart. You can see me smiling and there's nothing in my pocket. They gave me my booklet. Everybody was writing. I opened the book as though I was writing. I was not writing though. I was just praying in the tongues. In tongues. I waited for like five people to submit. When they had submitted, I took the script. Went and submit. And then I went to God. I said, well, I'm supposed to fail. But I'm your son and there's something called mercy. The Bible says, as a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those that fear him. When the result came out, I got a C plus. And I didn't write anything in that booklet. Save my name and my, my ID number rather. I'm not saying go and do it like that. Oh. Better go and read. Students, better go and read. <laughs> but I'm just telling you that when your humanity dawns on you, when you seem to be overcome by your weakness and your frailties, what is that one law you can introduce that is like a master key in the kingdom? Because after tonight, many of us will no longer desire the message of God just because you have sinned. But you will pray that prayer because it is a master key that can open anything. Somebody shout mercy. Great is your mercy towards me. Your loving kindness for me. Your tender mercy I see day after day. The Bible says they are new every morning. Even when you are unfaithful, you always provide for me. Great is your mercies, I see. Great is your grace. Listen, grace gives you what you don't deserve mercy exempts you from what you deserve in other words you deserve judgment or you deserve certain consequences because of your disobedience or because of your ignorance mercy is what will exempt you from it mercy exodus 25 god told moses in verse 21 and 22, when, when he was giving Moses the plan of the box, the Ark of the Covenant, he told Moses, he said, below the two cherubims, let there be, the inside of the Ark was supposed to be the books of the law. He said, but above it should be the mercy seat. There was a lid that covered the commandments. It was called the mercy seat. And he told Moses, he said, Dear, I will meet with you. Question, why did God exalt mercy above judgment? Because you know, the commandments there was all about don't do this, don't do this. If you do this, this will happen if you do this. But God told, mercy, told Moses, he said, when you are constructing the ark, hide those tablets under the mercy seat. That means God desires mercy above judgment. This was in the Old Testament. Even in the dispensation of the law, God was still willing. And no wonder David understood this secret and he was one, a man that was able to exploit the mercies of God. Mercy. 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 You are in the midst of a battle and you desire victory, you need the mercies of God. How did they win the battle against those three kings in Second Chronicles chapter 20? 
after praying and fasting God told them you will not fight for the, you will not fight in this battle and then the next day Jehoshaphat called all the Levites and the priests put them before the army and the Bible says all that they were doing as they advanced towards the battlefront was to sing a song that song is contained in Psalms 136 from verse 1 to the end all the song is about is one sentence for the Lord is good and his mercy endured for it. many of you have read that particular chapter and you get you get tired of it it's boring because every verse the Lord is good and his mercy is endured forever the Lord is good and you wonder why God had to repeat that it was not repetition is a code is a secret code that every time you invoke the mercy of God God steps in himself the Bible says when they got to the place of battle there was no battle to fight because they saw all dead men for the Lord is good and his mercy is forever you are good and your mercy is forever hallelujah you it's not every battle <laughs> oh god you see there are, there are certain levels of spiritual warfare you enter into where all you need is the mercy of god i'm telling you there are there are dimensions of spiritual battles where even you you know that you have not captured or sustained the understanding from god's word to engage the enemy and therefore anything you pray at that time may be baseless there is one code one key you can use it's called the mercies of god call upon the mercy of god lord i come from a family i just realize now that what is working in the family is a generational curse everybody dies at a particular age including those who became christians and pastors but lord i stand and i invoke your mercy is only mercy that can with that can restrain a ah, yeah. naturally speaking a cross that should find expression it takes the mercy of god to restrain it lord i've not been tightened and by right the devourer is supposed to devour my finances yet i've been prospering even when i didn't know about tithing i show you the mystery it was the mercy of god it was not luck most of what we call luck is actually a downplay of the mercies of god you see the, the thing about the mercies of god is it can be shown to anybody it doesn't have to be a believer the bible did not say that every believer that calls on the name of the lord shall be saved the bible says anyone that calls on the name of the lord anyone anyone how about God lifting you like I've said how, that, how about God changing your story you know there are certain blessings that can come to you you just know that this one I didn't pray for it I didn't fast for it I didn't even sow for it how did it come mercy psalms 113 verse 7 to 9 the bible says he looks down from the heaven and then he lifts the poor from the dust and the needy from the dunghill that god can take a man from impoverishment and poverty and raise him to a place how do you think it, there were certain people who ruled nigeria who by all qualifications were not supposed to be on the throne there were people who ruled Nigeria after coming from the prison. When a man that comes out from prison is not, he's not supposed to be regarded in society naturally. How do you explain a man who was a prisoner comes out from prison and then he becomes the first? It's the message of God. 
Look around your life. There are certain things that God has done that you know you don't deserve it. I'm sure you need the mystery. It's the mercy of God. Nothing else. It's not luck. You can't call it luck because it keeps happening again and again. Some of us with our disobedience, God has been blessing us. Some of us, we are, we are <laughs> I, I call it contract Christianity. You pay tithe this month, you don't pay tithe the next month. You say, God, don't just, let me just, after I settle this and this, next month, the next month I will pay tithe. And God was not angry. Your salary still came. You didn't fall sick. There was no accident. It's called His mercy. It's a part of God that anyone that knows how to exploit, you, you will come into a, a level of flawless results again and again. People will look at you, admire you to the point where they'll begin to be envious of you. It's not luck. It's not because you know anybody. It's not because you know Mr. A or B. It's the mercies of God. One night, Joseph slept a prisoner. The next morning, he woke up a prime minister. It was the mercies of God. It was the mercies of God. Give us that Psalms 1 1. Yes. He said, He raises the poor out of the dust. Look at this. And lifts the needy out of the ash heap. The word ash heap simply means dustbin or a place of trash. God will look at you and your third class and say, It's you I will lift in your family. God will look at all the mess that has happened in your life. And to every normal person, there is nothing good that can come out of your life again. God will say, it is you I will anoint. And I will begin to use you to bring deliverance to your family. God will look at you whom everybody has written off in that family. Some of you were so sick in your childhood, they thought you would die. It was the hand of mercy that took you. Next verse. He said that he may sit, that he may sit him with princes, with the princes of his people. Verse 9. And I like verse 9. I believe this is a prophecy for somebody. In the midst of his mercies, this is what he can do. He grants the barren woman a home. Like a joyful mother of children. Praise the Lord. So you went to the hospital. They told you you have all kinds of fibroid inside of your womb. Done everything you can do, no child. The Bible says he is able to grant a barren woman. And God, Genesis 21, I like that scripture. It says, And God visited Sarah according to the time of life and did to her as he had promised. This was a 90 year old woman. The Bible says, And she conceived and bore. And here was her testimony. She said, Who would have thought that I would give Abraham a son? In his old age. If you understand the message of God, you will know that there is no situation that, that, that can change. First list is out, your name was not there. Second list is out, your name is not there. Third list came out with all the connection and everything. Your name is not there. Let the mercy of God arise from you. That's when they will manufacture another list that you can't understand. What do they call those kind of lists? Supplementary lists. It's just the mercy of God. There's nothing like supplementary list. After three lists, your name is not there. What, did you share your testimony? You didn't. Better share it. Too. That somebody called him one day and said, one of the jam you have wrote, you have written, your former, former jam you wrote, go and change your course or change your institution to social school. He changed it. And before that day, he was called. You have gotten admission. You didn't hear what I said. I'm not saying the jam of this year. Jam that you have written and they forgot. If you don't know the message of God, you will not believe in miracles. There is power in your name. <laughs> miracles happen in your name. voice in praise it's you that I see it is you that I see 
when you understand how to invoke the mercy of God anybody that tells you no you will define the meaning of no to that person no does not mean it will not happen for you no is no it means next opportunity the bible says in micah 7 verse 8 one of our key scriptures this year it said rejoice not over me my enemies though i fall yet i will rise though i sit in darkness the lord himself shall become light it doesn't deny that you are in darkness and nobody decides to shine the light for you god himself will become light to you the bible says the psalmist says the lord is my light and my salvation whom shall i fear the lord is the stronghold of my life whom shall i be afraid of when my enemies even my foes came up against me to eat up my flesh i can't pray i can't fast they have been attacking me from every side but the bible says suddenly they stumbled and fell he said though a host encamp against me yet will i not be afraid yet though war rise against me yet in this will i be confident you know the meaning of that it is imminent that attack is coming towards you and the enemy is about to come and trample on you the bible says yet in this why because you understand the message of god job said that though this this skin is destroyed yet in my flesh i will see god that a dead thing can come alive how do you explain that a man lost everything in one day and then the bible said and god restored job and gave him double of all he lost in this economy in this current economy dollar is increasing every day the naira is becoming worthless a unemployment is rising by the day the thing about the message of God is when it is working for you, God can use anybody and anything. Say, God, I've been doing business for a long time. I am good, but there is nothing coming. The few people that patronize me, they don't pay. Let the mercy of God speak for you. I tell you, God can appear to a man in the night. Give him your name and your contact. Call that person to handle this contract. And then they call you the next day are you so so and so you say yes say please can you come to so so and so please you say yes and then you reach there they say can you do this and that and you can't do it they say even if you can't do it come we'll teach you we'll train you god i graduated my certificate is education they told me that i can't get a decent job with it that's a certificate that would make you a manager in an organization and you say, but I don't know this thing. I'm not in this field. They say, okay, our organization has decided that we will send you to so-so place and train you for two weeks. It's not luck. It's the message of God. If you understand how to touch that part of God. This ministry, my life, everything you see here, it's not because people can pray. It's not because people can fast. Maybe some of you pray more than me. I'm just a man that God has decided to show mercy to. Whether you like me or not, God has decided to be merciful to me. I remember those days when we used to still play the instrument. Sometimes we we'll go from this church to play, go to that church. And every time I'm on the keyboard, the Holy Spirit will whisper to me. He said, this church that you are playing here, one day they will invite you here to minister and they will honor you. When he was saying those things to me, it looked too good to be true. And even when I started to believe it, it was too far ahead in my mind. Only for two years later, the same places. And the most surprising thing was that they didn't recognize that I came that time. It's not charm, it's the message of God. Charm is not as strong as this one, I'm telling you. If there is a charm I can recommend for you, it's called mercy. I'm telling you. Hold it and watch your life go through effortless blessing. 
where even when people are complaining to God that he has no right to bless you the more they complain the more God is lifting you that's what it means when he says thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my haters is the message of God are we ready to pray this night I'm telling you because when God arises today and bestows his mercy on you some of you what you have been trusting God for it may not take 48 hours it may not take 24 hours Mark chapter 10 the Bible gives us the story of Bartimaeus from verse 47 to 52 Jesus was passing by Jericho going out of the city and of course as usual crowd followed him if I were, if you were to be in the time of Jesus I believe that the closest people in that crowd will be his disciples after that maybe the Pharisees and the scribe because you know the Bible says can I show you can I share something with you the Bible says there was a time that four men brought their friend who was crippled isn't it and they opened the roof and let him down and then Jesus looked at him and said your sins are forgiven instantly the Bible says the scribe began to complain the scribe and the Pharisees they began to grumble at Jesus that why will you say his sins are forgiven that means that the scribe and the Pharisees they always had front seat in Jesus's meeting in other words in as much as they hated him and they criticized him they were always hustling to get the front seat in his meeting you don't understand that the Bible so if, if you had a crowd following Jesus this will obviously be the next people then all the prominent rich men and women I mean there was no space for a common citizen let alone someone who was deformed the bible says his name was Bartimaeus, blind Bartimaeus, because he was blind he was named after his affliction he was born so blind histor historical theologians said that the meaning of his blindness was that he had no eyes in his socket there were no eyes there that was why he was called blind Bartimaeus. he was born blind so there was no hope for even a miracle the Bible says as soon as he heard that Jesus was passing he began to raise a cry he began to raise a cry of desperation see let me tell you something sometimes your cry of desperation to God is the best way your heart can express how much you need his mercy but began to cry when when we say pray and people are crying before God it's not just the, the volume of their voice God is hearing but the desperation of their cry is communicating their need for his mercy and he began to cry Jesus son of David have mercy on me Jesus son of David have mercy on me the Bible says they told him to keep quiet even if Jesus will attend to anybody it's not you come for the next crusade God will not meet you huh there are many of us who look at our depravity in the natural we look at our our incapacities in the natural and we feel that because of those things God cannot reach out to us yet it is in the midst of that that God's ever loving kindness is outstretched towards you no shadow you will light up mountain you will climb up Drumming after me. No one that you would see now, lie that you would see now, coming after me. Listen, the Bible says he began to cry again. The Bible says, Why they hushed him? He kept crying out. And Jesus stood still and called him. Jesus asked him, What will I do for you? Now, why was he shouting, Son of David? Because Jesus was not the direct son of David. I hope you know. The direct son of David was Solomon. In that context, because Solomon became king. But you see, in United States of America, before the president retires from his tenure, there's something they call presidential pardon. Where the president is at liberty to give pardon, to offer pardon. 
and release certain prisoners regardless of how long or how short their tenure has been in the prison Abi, how many of you know that one and jesus was a king so what he was crying out for was presidential pardon because jesus was about to leave jericho just the way a president is about to leave a tenure that's when he approves the pardon of certain prisoners so he was crying out that before you pass this territory oh god son of david have mercy i wish that somebody would pray and cry like that this night when we begin to pray and his cry for mercy gave him his sight back mercy you want things to change for you call on the mercies of god there is a yoke on your family nobody is rising in this family everybody is skillful and intelligent graduates with MSCs, but everything and ev everyone here seems to be oppressed call upon the mercy of god you have prayed and fasted for something and it's not forthcoming you have even sowed seed there's one thing you can do cry for mercy god even if you will not give me again because of anything give because of your mercy when the message of god surrounds your life eh, the enemy will not understand why he attacks you and yet you are always victorious people will not understand why you go through the things you go through people who are who if people should go through half of the things that you go through they would have died some would have been depressed some of them would have even run mad or insane but people don't understand why you come out of these things more than a conqueror it's the mercy of god and very quickly before we pray what is the requirement to accessing the mercy of god what is the secret formula to touching this part of god and extending his benevolence to your life regardless of whether you have sustained spiritual understanding or not regardless of whether you are qualified by human terms or not the requirement for accessing god's mercy just one genuine brokenness genuine brokenness genuine brokenness what is brokenness is a state of complete surrender brokenness is not repentance don't mistake in both repentance simply means a change of mind and repentance is turning away from a default or from a from, from, from a transgression brokenness extends beyond that brokenness is a place you come to where you acknowledge your complete surrendering to him what is brokenness brokenness is a recognition of your inadequacies a recognition of your inadequacies and your imperfections outside of the mercy of god that you realize how imperfect how inadequate you are without the mercy of god that you realize that without god's mercy this job interview i failed it already without the mercy of god the last exam i wrote i know i'm supposed to come back and spill a course is a point you get to where you acknowledge it the bible says if my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways this is the attitude of brokenness that's the reason why for you to achieve brokenness you will have to fight against pride and self-sufficiency most of us are not recipients of the mercies of god even though we are his children because there is this level of pride in us you feel that you can handle it you feel that based on your, your qualification your certificate no, let no man deceive you hello this is africa no man should deceive you just because you have two degrees one masters or two masters and one of them is a foreign masters you did masters in a professional course so because of that once i submit this cv <laughs> no 
it takes one who have come to a point where he recognizes that even with the things he calls an advantage in the natural in the realm of the spirit those are the things that will become incomplete and inadequate outside of the mercy of god that if god doesn't breathe on your certificate it's nothing more than paper if god does not breathe on your skill you'll just be one tailor in your house if god does not breathe on your intelligence you'll be so intelligent that nobody will, will recognize you most times we trust too much in ourselves and i'm not against competency but most times we, we forget that these things count for nothing where god is most times we become too self-sufficient i can handle it that's the reason why there are many of us who come from families where your families have gone through all kinds of things not because god is not willing to help or not because god cannot help but because there are too many proud and self-sufficient people there call upon god they say no next time you are going for one thing or the other they are always asking who you do who do you know dear who do you know here when you are so proud and self-sufficient you cannot access the message of god can only come to people who are broken people who acknowledge that they are nothing before him yes i pray yes i fast but it's not because of those things that the hand of god is on my life I believe that it is because of his mercy there are some meetings i go for i am so tired there are meetings i've gone to i was sick literally physically sick and few minutes before we leave for that meeting i just lie down on the floor and say lord show me mercy they are there waiting for the almighty apostle to come and do all kinds of things but here i am my body is failing me i've not even had time to pray but show me mercy I'm nothing without you. That's what I do most of the times. I say, if you don't show me mercy, I'm doomed. If you walk out on me now, and my life is finished. Show me mercy. This is not, this is not downplaying your self-esteem. This is just a place where you recognize that outside God, you are inadequate and insufficient. It's good to pray and fast before you go for that meeting. But after you have done all those things, kneel down before him and say baba show me mercy somebody gave i think i heard it from a man of god that it was said that there was a conference where people were praying and our father daddy joe was he was outside on the altar praying and so people had to go to the altar to pray so one of the young pastors went close to daddy joe while he was praying and when he put his ear to listen to daddy joe's prayer all he was hearing was mercy 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 and for two hours that was all the man was praying mercy mercy you would think that because he's a mighty man let me tell you the truth the higher you rise in this kingdom the more you will depend on him and realize that you are depraved without him that meeting we did the the, the, the teaching on gen demonic siege breaking demonic siege I'd been preaching all through that weekend i had no time to even study god only dropped it in my heart that's what you would teach few minutes to three when they will come and pick me i just came back from a meeting in the morning i was tired that was my fourth sermon that day oh, sorry that weekend i opened my jota closed it and say lord show me mercy until today i hear too many people from different parts of nigeria calling me texting me that, that that message was powerful it was not because i prayed for nine hours so i didn't pray before i came for that message i would lie to you if i tell you is every message i pray for there are sometimes our humanity will not allow us there are sometimes we are so weak even the people that we are going to minister to don't even know that we are as in need of god as they are but all of a sudden the mercy of god just shows up for you And if there's one thing I want to continue my life is the mercy of God. When God shows you mercy, if you were supposed to follow this door, and maybe because of ignorance, 
or disobedience you started following this way if the mercy of God speaks for you God will take that door from there and put it before you so that you can follow in other words even when you break certain laws God can still bless you Paul said that this happened so that we will not trust in ourselves. what have you held on to what physical achievement you think you are so smart you think you are so intelligent thank God for that you can read so much you feel you are the best for the job you feel that because of your IQ you should be at the top of the class thank God for all those things that we boast in in the natural but friends it's time for us to call upon the mercy of God and realize that without that mercy with all those things we are yet nothing Psalms 51 verse 17 and this is where we'll close brokenness brokenness genuine brokenness he said the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit a broken and a contrite heart read the last sentence together one to go these oh God that means God has a weakness that can be explored God can be angry terribly over a family and decide to send judgment on that family because of their perpetrations and disobedience one generation after another but if one broken soul rises from there it can restrain the judgment of God the Bible says a broken heart and a contrite spirit a heart that recognizes his or her dire need of God God will never despise brothers and sisters we need to learn how to depend on the mercies of God every day yes I know that the Bible says because I live you shall live also but when you wake up in the morning thank him for his mercies because it's by that mercy that you are alive the Bible says there are terrors by night well able to kill and destroy even the righteous just because you are anointed doesn't mean that in the midst of an attack you will be saved because Saul was anointed but he died on Mount Gibor it is the mercies of God that shields you it is the mercies of God and the Bible listen where we read firstly it says that these mercies are new every morning that means this 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 lavish extension of the benevolence of God God has so programmed it that it should come to you every day so the message of God you experienced yesterday is different from the one you should experience today that's why he says that he daily loads us with benefit so it's something that we should cry for every day but it takes a heart of brokenness a broken heart coming to a point where you are nothing without him where you can roll on the ground and tell him God outside you I am nothing this is all I am dust without you People may celebrate me outside but before you it is is it not because you decided to use me most of the people God used check scripture there were people who came from families or backgrounds or lineages that had all kinds of disadvantage Perez was the son of Judah with a concubine that was a sin Judah slept with his son's wife and she produced children God said it is from this lineage that the Savior will come Ruth was a Moabites from another nation idol worship God said you will become the ancestor of Israel of, 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 of the Savior of Israel Rahab was a prostitute out of everybody God will save in Jericho he saved the prostitute you see when you if you understand this you will now know why some people in the midst of their stubbornness that younger brother of yours that is in the house that will refuse to come to church all of a sudden one year from now he has an encounter 
and he begins to God begins to use him mightily meanwhile you who have been coming to church for five years nothing has happened it's all because of the mercy of God it's all because of the mercy of God 2019 was when I had my vision of the Lord Jesus and I've told you that when he came to me that time I was not fast you know I was not in any serious fast I just finished undergoing a, 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 an operation I was so depressed at that time of my life that I needed every encouragement no prayer nothing I think you were you, you were together at that time 10 o'clock that night I was in pains I decided to just go in and sleep lay down on the couch as I closed my eyes there he was standing before me so don't think it was one retreat I was I was flying on the 70 days first no you can do that one and you'll never see him that's why he said I will show mercy I will I will it's within my power this sickness has been written off or you have been written off by this sickness he told Ezekiah set your house in order for you will die Ezekiah turned before him and said remember oh God and for once God had to break his protocol while the prophet was still going out God said return back I know that I don't change my word but this time around I have to speak another word to cancel what I said tell him I'm giving him 15 years at least if God has said I'll spare your life for two days that is justifiable enough but when mercy speak even you will tell God even this one you for no one for me I don't deserve it they are new every morning you every morning great is thy faithfulness oh Lord great is thy faithfulness we are going to pray this night but listen to me many of us are here the answer to the predicaments of your family now is just the mercy of God they have fasted they have prayed they have received all kinds of prophecy they have done everything that should be done yet the affliction is not going away yet the delay seems to continue your answer this night is mercy 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 Lord I wasn't serious with my Christian experience as a matter of fact I didn't know you I played with my life when I was younger than this but can you still use me yes by his mercy it is the mercy of God that will take a mantra and make him an apostle it's the mercy of God that can take a man whom all mankind can zero down on and lift him to become a ruler in his time it's the mercy of God tonight we are going to cry for the mercies of God some of you are here you are due to enter into a new season you are due a new dimension some of you are here it is you are overdue a promotion yet nothing seems to happen there's one more thing you can apply to the equation that will change it is the mercies of God stand on your feet and let's cry to him they are new every morning you
If you can, please be on your feet. Let's pray one prayer. Psalms 102 verse 13. And that's our prayer this night. Psalms 102 verse 13. You will arise and have mercy on Zion. For the time to favor her. Yes, the set time has gone. Remove Zion and put your name there. Put your family's name there. Let's read together on the screen. One to go. You will arise and have mercy upon Jonathan for the time to favor him. Yes, the set time has gone. I give you two, three minutes. Lift your voice and cry to him. Cry to him. Right over my family, mercy. Over this delay, mercy. Over this affliction, that is eating me up, mercy. Over my family, mercy. Thou shalt arise and have mercy. And have mercy. Have mercy. Come on, cry. Come on, pray. For your family, for your loved ones, for your siblings, for your business, for your spiritual life.
When you don't know what to pray again, let this be your secret code, mercy. When it seems like you are burdened beyond measure, when you feel overpressured by situations around, learn how to call upon the mercy of God. When there seems to be no way out again, always learn to hold on to his mercy. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. I'm going to pray a prayer this evening. But before I pray, I'll tell you what I'm seeing. As we prayed, I just saw a door open in the spirit. Anytime I see this, I know it's because God wants to uplift certain people. And whether or not you qualify for that lifting, God is about to break protocol. Because of your cry of mercy, there are long-awaited miracles that are about to be shipped into your life now. Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for your children. Every hand lifted. Every family represented. Lord, is there anything that they have been deprived of? Is there anything that has escaped them that should come to them? Is there anything that has been a limitation over their lives? This night I invoke your mercy. And I declare that in seven days, let everything that has escaped from them be restored back to them. By the power of your mercy, everything that has stood as a limitation, that has resisted them, Lord, I, in the name of Jesus, by your mercy, let help arise from above for them. Let help arise from above from them. Father, I invoke your mercies. And I pray in the name of Jesus, whether they qualify for a lifting or not, whether they qualify for a promotion or not, whether they qualify to be blessed or not, let your mercy superimpose on every inqualification. And in the days ahead, I declare and decree, let there be a lifting for every life. Let there be a lifting for every life. Let there be an upliftment for every life. Please keep lifting your hands. I want to pray.
Father, anyone or any family suffering from any form of affliction, done all that they can to no avail, drugs upon drugs, medication upon medication, test upon test, prayers with fasting, and all that they have sought to no avail. I invoke your mercy, my Father. And I declare that by your mercy this night appear in their situation and let the affliction be rolled away. Let the affliction be rolled away. Let the affliction be rolled away. And I decree and declare by the mercies of God that is coming upon your life now. Before miracle service, may your miracle locate you. You will not have to wait for miracle service to come. I send the miracles your way. I send the miracles your way. Our Father in heaven, how we love you. We lift your name in all the air. May your kingdom be established in our presence as your people. Please keep lifting your hands. Just lift your hands. Be still. The Holy Spirit just told me this in my ear while I was singing. That there are certain people, because of his mercy, a grace and a mantle is about to come upon your life that will be the solution for your family. It's not for everybody, it's just a few people. Father, in the name of Jesus, as their hands are lifted, stretch your right hand. And by your mercy, let grace come upon those vessels. You may not qualify for it by all right standing. But God is handpicking you as his vessel. And by the mercies of God, let that grace rest upon your life. Become the deliverer of your family. Become the deliverer of your community. Become the one that will roll the stone away. The stone of oppression. The stone of limitation. May your kingdom be established in our presence as your people we declare your mighty love. So blessed be the Lord. investment of his mercies the situations are changing right now the burden is being lifted a new season has opened up for you there's about to be a mecca and a major shift weep not for your time of deliverance has come your day of salvation has come wave your hands one more time and give him praise 
Thank you for the multitude of your mercy. Thank you for the multitude of your mercy. Thank you for the multitude of your blessing. Now while we are all standing, I'll do this before we close. While we are all standing, I've spoken about the mercy of God. There are some of us who are here who are not born again. Why we are all standing? It was because of you that this word has come. You know that you are not right with the Lord. Or you know that you don't know him yet. Today the mercy of God is being extended to you. Or perhaps you are here and you really don't know where you are now with the Lord you have derailed or certain things have happened and shifted you from the Lord and you need to rededicate your life you wonder can God show me mercy for all that I have done can God be merciful to me despite my past the outstretched arm of God is before you today if you are in any of this category and you need to give your heart to the Lord or you need to rededicate your life to the Lord while we are all standing I want you to raise your right hand to the heaven and I'll pray with you right now. You can't be ashamed in this atmosphere. He says, I will show mercy to whom I will show mercy. Today, the Lord has come for you. He's about to correct the past and make all things new. He's about to begin a new journey with you. And you are saying, Lord, I surrender tonight. I surrender my all. I surrender my heart. No more running away. Raise your right hand to the heavens and I will pray for you. For his mercies. By his mercies we are not consumed. If you raise your right hand, please walk to the front very quickly. And I will just pray for you. Walk to the front. Wherever you are, from the front to the back, just walk your day of mercy God is about to cause a change God is about to rewrite your destiny if God is talking to you and you are in the congregation join them this is not the day to say no to the mercy of God that is stretched towards you Bible says there is joy in heaven for the repentance of one I want you in the congregation to lift your voice and pray for these ones while I just lead them to the Lord those of you in front whether this is your first time giving your heart to the Lord or you are rededicating again I want you to just repeat these words after me say father I come to you today I acknowledge my sin I acknowledge my transgression I acknowledge my inadequacies but I also acknowledge your mercy today I receive your mercy forgive me make my life new again thank you for saving me in Jesus name Amen. Father, I stretch my right hand towards them and I declare that the past is over and they become new creatures in Christ Jesus. I declare today that you will show them mercy. I declare that today everything about them is changed. I declare that they receive the gift of righteousness and the abundance of grace. And I declare that they are, they are yours forever in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Can we celebrate God?